welcome you guys all. Thank you for being here. We are live now. Okay, good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Mercury retrograde and welcome to Power Talk with Jean Adrian. And today my guest is Michael Merdad. He is an old friend of mine who is a world-renowned spiritual teacher. He's an author. He's written many books. He's been an intuitive healer for over 35 years, and I swear he's not that old. Um, <laughs> and um, he, Michael joins us today. We're going to kind of start off by talking about our soul, why we're here. And then we, I want to tell you all a little bit and let Michael tell you a little bit about where he's headed because his soul is on a journey as well. So welcome, Michael. Hi there. Good to see you again. And by the way, his website is michaelmerdad.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-M-I-R-D-A-D.com. So, wow, Michael, you know, you are, um, well, you're the, the minister at Unity of Sedona, so you're on the internet a lot, you know, I, I see your, um, your live broadcasts that y'all are doing from there, and you, you're doing classes, and it's, it's like we're all in each other's living room now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all changing so fast. And yeah, and I'm not um, a minister. I don't think I would be or could be um, uh, such a thing, you know, but they, they, it's referred to as a spiritual leader. It's, okay. it's more of a, it's a title that um, a lot of spiritual centers are starting to use now because they don't, so a lot of them don't want just that point. They don't want ministers. They don't want people kind of under one particular uh, training or dogma. So they're mm -hmm. wanting um, folks that are authors, you know, they could have somebody like uh, Alan Cohen or me or, you know, people that are teachers that they might use for that. In fact, um, one of the more popular versions of this title was uh, Marianne Williamson. You know, she became right. the spiritual leader at a unity uh, in the Midwest um, just a short number of years ago. Um, it, it only lasted for a couple of years, I think. But, um, but she did that. It's, so it's an example of where they want a, um, a public figure, spiritual figure, that's not too traditional, you know, so it works mm -hmm. out. And I've been there for about, at Unity of Sedona, for about seven years. And it had to be something that really long? unique. Yeah, wow. it's been seven Seems years. like only yeah. yesterday when you moved from the Northwest. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, time has flown. And, wow. you know, I don't know that I would have done that in – in, in almost anywhere in the world or in the country, you know, um, I said yes to this after saying no several times, mm -hmm. but they were really persistent. Um, and I, I just felt a certain good vibe about it, but it was totally weird because as you know, you know, I was touring three, four weeks at a time, sometimes six and seven weeks on tour and then home for a week and then on. And so things were like that for so long, I was used to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and they offered this and I thought, God, it would be such a bizarre shift and this is also in the context for everybody watching in that um for us sometimes changes propose are proposed into our lives and just because we cannot imagine how they'll fit doesn't mean that they can't be done i mean this whole thing with unity of sedona first of all me being a minister most people would laugh you know like uh, i'm on the road and uh, it's it's i don't teach one thing i teach everything i teach the connection of everything so it's not like i could fit or suit one particular thought system so it wouldn't have fit and and my tour schedule was already made for the next year and uh, there were a million reasons i had a home that i you know i couldn't just walk away from um but and in context again of this show it's um about about how to co-create a new life and how to how to move forward in your life there's you've got to be willing to think out of the box that doesn't mean i'm encouraging people to leap off a cliff um and and put ourselves into unnecessary dangers um but it is a matter of at least taking steps not jumping off but at least taking steps to move ourselves in the right direction to see if the doors open when we knock on them. Well, you know, and I believe that we're here for our soul to grow. And I'm not so sure that the soul grows as much as it can when we are stagnant and, and right. you know, just doing one thing and not, not stretching ourselves. I mean, happened just for me just this year. Uh, you know, I was, you know, basically happy meditating in France. And I heard a voice that said, it's time for you to move. And I'm like, wow. what? You know, I love my house in the mountains. No, I don't want to, there's no place I want to live, you yeah. know? And by September 1st, here I was, Tallahassee, Florida, you know? And 
I can't even remember living in the mountains now. Wow. It's, it's so funny. It was that much right. of a shift. And I still don't know where this is headed. Right. You know, I'm definitely on a journey and I'm waiting for more information, which apparently comes, you know, on an as needed basis that I hadn't got it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of it, you know, and, yeah. and when it comes, let's all pray it doesn't come during Mercury retrograde. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but I, I, same, same for me. I, when I, I was living in the Northwest for many years. I loved it. I moved there for the lush green vibe to it. Very mm -hmm. nice vibe, um, beauty. And when these guys asked me, I'm thinking, well, the odds of me wanting to move to a desert are exactly the opposite of right. what I would even consider, you know. And again, um, sometimes the guidance is, is so far out of the box, you, you can't even imagine how it fits. And again, I say that with caution because I'm not suggesting everybody just jump with every little um, compulsion or, or something that snaps in the mind now and then. Just because you have a thought doesn't mean you have to run with it. But you, know, you have to listen and yeah, you know, really meditate looking, on it. Right. Looking for... Uh, corroboration, looking for confirmation, or as many of us say, you know, looking for f the guidance to repeat a few times, you know, and like even right now at this at this time in the world, um, I'm noticing, and, and I just did a couple of very intense online and in-person five-day intensives on awakening that divine consciousness within ourselves. And with that happening, I noticed a lot of the attendees it just it catapulted them right into deeper, more profound sense of guidance, but also the other word, which is synchronicities, like they're, mm -hmm. they're feeling in sync. So right now I'm noticing on the planet, but also uh, the people that have done some really intense work lately, we all need to pay attention because there's a lot of synchronicity happening right now. Um, like for me, um, on, on the clock, um, 12, 12. I, I go to bed at 12, 12. I woke up at 4, 44. Um, it happens again and again and again. The numbers, I mean, not, not like in the, I remember in the 90s, um, 80s, 90s, maybe that was happening a lot, but it was always, almost always 11, 11. Yeah. And there's reasons for that that we won't go into, but it was almost always 11, 11. And so it's really amazing because now it's constant synchronicities of numbers and it's happening five, 10 times a day. So yeah. folks have to keep an eye out for that. Cause it for means, me too. Yeah, for it me means too. something's happening. You're, you're in sync with something. Now start asking what that is. Exactly. And you know, one of the things I think that people tend to get in sync with is um, the news, you know, uh, I mean, cause there is so, so much up. insanity yeah. going on right now, you yeah. know, um, and you know, my, what I have heard about you is that you've never read a newspaper. Um, you know, so God bless you for that. Uh, <laughs> you know? um, yep. so what can we do to not get hooked into that lower vibration of mass consciousness drama and stay at a higher level? Um, that's, you know, uh, that's, that's a good question because most people don't have a clue on what to do with that. Some people actually think it's irresponsible to not be caught up in the stuff of the world. So the key philosophically, the key is to be in the world, but not of the world. Right. But to answer more specifically, um, I don't know that people can just like, let's say, for example, if we were to say, well, shut your TVs, don't watch the news that for some people that's avoidance. And I agree that that's not going to necessarily secure you or, or, or cure you, but there's different wording for it, which is, I wouldn't say avoid or shut off all, all of these things off, but I would say the first thing to do is recognize how and why you end up watching these things. There's an addiction, there's a, um, a stimulus, a fear. You know, well, I need to watch the news just in case everything's going wrong. Okay, let's say it is. How are you gonna fix it? Right. You can't, because all of this is about teaching us humility and surrender to God. You know, like you said, you had guidance, and then there's this, it only goes so far. And then now what am I supposed to do? There's only so much that comes to us when we're creating a new life or a new day for that matter. And there's a certain amount that's supposed to be lessons in trust. So it's kind of like, okay, I wake up, <clears throat> have my prayer meditation time where I, you know, getting in alignment, but, but, and that can cover me for the day, but it doesn't mean that throughout the day, I don't 
want to recalibrate and get back into center, especially if I'm pulled off center. Now, I've never, I've never looked at a newspaper. I don't think I've even read a comic strip from a paper for that matter. But, you know, I've never looked at a paper, um, you know, nor, do, nor have I ever watched the news. Um, and some people, again, will say that's uh, negligent and all that, which is just dandy, you know, good for them. But it, it's not my thing. And I don't, I don't at all feel uninformed. I feel guided. I feel clear. I think I'm clearer and happier and more guided than the average person watching the average uh, show of paranoia and watch out for this and that. So I, I, you know, I don't think I look at my life and go, gosh, if my life has fallen apart. It might be because I don't read enough newspapers. The truth is papers and shows and TV, you know, these uh, um, news and all that, they only show you what they want to show you anyway. They show you what sells for them. Um, you know, if there were two, two news shows and one had a big drama to tell you about, which would get people on the show to watch at, be sure to watch at five o'clock, here's the news. Or it was something mild, like, you know, Michael and Gene Adrian are gonna do some really wonderful special conversation on the news today at five o'clock on a different station, and they're gonna talk about self-worth. One of them's gonna have most people watching it and the mm -hmm. other not, because people have an addiction to drama. Why though? I'm saying we need to ask ourselves why we want to read that paper. You know, it's, it's our own darkness that wants fed. It's our own ego that wants fed. It's not, it's not God that says, listen, since um, I have no capability of communicating with my creations um, because there's no such thing as guidance, I need you all to trust the newspapers to tell you what I, God, would like you to know each day. And uh, that's not the case. So, um, no. well, so I don't find a real relevance with all that stuff. Yeah, and you know, uh, and I, I think that you and I are in sync on this one, is that we both believe in, in co-creating our reality along with spirit. And you know, I think when you really get caught up in that drama, you're co-creating all right, but not, <laughs> not with spirit. Right. You know, so speaking of co-creating, you've got an, an online course that starts in January about co-creating, right? That's correct. Yeah, I do it every January. In fact, for, for many, many years, and, and this is important, again, for folks watching that, that um, and you mentioned sort of a soul's purpose. You brought that up a little while ago. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so let me comment to that, which is, you know, at a talk I did just yesterday at Unity of Sedona, um, yeah, I mentioned this, but people underestimate that all the things that have ever happened in your life, whether it's having children, whether it's um, having certain dramas or traumas, or whether it's wonderful experiences of various kinds, what school you went to, you didn't go to, you did this, you didn't do that, the jobs you've had, everything we've ever experienced can be turned around and used as part of our greater good or our soul's purpose. The problem is some people are plodding along. Some people could be in, in a, an extraordinarily wonderful paying job. They could have wonderful kids that they love and all that. But if they're not listening to guidance, those apparent positives are actually going to be only positives in that moment. They will still end. And there will be nothing left of them because you've just sat there and not asked how they're supposed to come together. In other words, there's a, it's like having a trophy from school, uh, sixth grade. How is that helping you today? So if it's just a trophy you put on your shelf or you have children and you go, look, I have pictures of my kids. If all you do is have an experience, positive or negative, it just sits there sort of as a memory. Spirit tries to encourage us to open up not, not to decide which experiences are good or bad. Not, not, no, that's still our ego. It's to just relax, not figure them out, sit back and open up and say, I'm ready for my soul's purpose. What is it I need to be doing now and from here on at this point? And spirit has this a unique ability far greater than any team of life coaches or counselors or psychics could do, spirit has an ability to say, we're going to take 1% of this, 5% of this, this, that, and the other, whatever, mix them up, and it turns your life into the exact direction it should be going. I mean, it's amazing, and that's where that humility and surrender comes in, but it's also where, why I use the term co-creating a new life, 
because a lot of spiritual teachers and programs and books are not actually co-creating. They teach you how to become the master of your own reality, the creator of your own reality. That has already been done. It's called the ego. The ego always wants to be, you know, in charge of its own reality. I am, you know. And so I use a term. There's God, I am. There's ego, I am not. So God says I am, and the ego can actually only affirm that it is not because it doesn't exist, it's not real, and has no power over us, but it seems like it. So in its little lowercase, I am not, where God says in all uppercase, I am. Which voice do you want to listen to? One of them creates with us. The other manufactures. So the ego tries to manufacture a world and a life that seems real, seems powerful, and is the one that gets most of our attention. God is that still voice that is huge in power, but is a still voice inside, waiting for our humility to say, you know, I've already tried to make a life. I've already, I tried being this and that, and I wasn't happy. I, I wrote a book and it didn't sell. I parented children and they're all drug addicts. I've done this, I've done it all of my own accord, or even things that have worked out, but I have 15 yachts and 20,000 houses, and I'm still not happy. That's, that's showing because I did it of myself. And that's why you hear in the New Testament, Jesus says, of myself, I am nothing. He means of my ego self that I am not, I am nothing. The ego self is nothing. So only when we collaborate, which is something I've taught a lot of spiritual centers who, who say to me, how did you how did you do what you do? How did you make Unity of Sedona almost overnight go from 60 attendees to 260 every Sunday? And how did you, how do you teach what you teach there? And how does everything work so well for you for the most part? The way you go on tour, the way you've written books and all that. How do, why do these things work? And honestly, if I were a teacher that was trying to teach how wonderful I am and what I can do and I wouldn't even be happy doing that, let alone what I could I be successful. There needs to be a collaboration. And when I went into Unity of Sedona and other spiritual centers, I said, all of you need to learn to collaborate. Do not have a dictator. Do not have a leader. Do not have a this or that. Collaborate. Yes, I play a role of spiritual leader. Yes, you play the role of a board president or, a you know, there's titles. But we work Together, we talk like we actually like each other and care about each other. Because I go to these other churches, and they're falling apart, and the minister hates the board, the board hates the minister, this and that and the other, all these strange things going on. And I'm talking about households, too, not just this is on the earth. And I just say, you know what? Sometimes when you want to recreate a new life and do so with God, when you want to create a new life, raise it all to the ground. Be like a warrior and just cut it all to the ground. I tell all the churches. They'll say, we would like your advice on how to create the most fantastic spiritual center. I said, okay, you sure? Oh, yes, Michael, we trust you. We, you've been teaching here. We love you. We trust you. You're great. People love you. This is great. So give us your advice. I say, first, I would start by firing all of you. And they're like, what? Oh, yes. That's why you don't like me. You see, once you get me talking, you're not going to like me because I'm, I'm telling these businesses, you're not going to like me because the first thing I would do is fire everyone and then start over and rehire only people who will get along. They want, you know, the people that want to rule and, and control board members, ministers. No, if you can't get along, that's not going to be the new age of a spiritual center. You're doing the old age stuff. You know? And it's doing the same thing, expecting right. it to turn out differently, and it never will. <laughs> right. You know? So th that just doesn't work. And so in closing that piece, I just... The whole co-creating concept is beautiful, and, um, and getting back to that idea of how little things in our lives add up to something, here's a quick example, which is I now teach every January a co-creating the new life uh, online class, but before I did that, let's jump back 20 years ago and 10 years ago. Every um, holiday season, it was almost the only time I wasn't on tour, if you can believe it. Christmas, New Year's, those holidays, I was, it was the only time I was not on tour for a couple of weeks in a row. It was like, wow. So I would use that time to recalibrate. It just was like, for some reason, just natural. 
So I would clean out the old, which you should always do in the fall time. Go and throw everything away, guys, if you're watching this. Go get rid of stuff you do not need. Get rid of photo albums that have creepy people in it that you dated 80 years ago that you don't like. Get rid of, you know, all, all the stuff. You know, if it has value, sell it so that you can have the cash to use for better new reasons. Get rid of it. Don't keep the rings, the necklaces, the photos. Get rid of stuff that represents anything but love, peace, and joy, and abundance. I mean, why would you keep anything that has the opposite connotation? Right. So first I say get rid of stuff. Then start being open. Don't rush into creating a new life. Stop and wait for co-creating. Ask for the guidance. I'm empty of my traumas. I'm, do my internal work. Not just throw away photo albums, but stuff inside. Hurt feelings. Old belief systems. Limiting beliefs. Get rid of it. Make the grail, the cup, empty. Make, make this vessel empty. Because that's the state of the divine feminine. When we empty ourselves, we are all, male or female, we are all then an expression of the divine feminine. The vessel like the womb, the vessel that is open to receive. And the receiving is not a literal thing like, like in bodies, it's spiritual inspirations. But we have to learn to be silent and listen. Mm -hmm. and, and just listen. And if you don't get an answer, just don't even think about it. Don't care. Because it could be you did and you don't know it yet. It could be it's, it's going to take 10 times of doing this. But just, just listen. L let the silence be filling in itself rather than, okay, I'm silent. I need some voices. I need some guidance. Just relax and listen. What happens for me a lot of the times, I could be, it could be the middle of the day or the evening. I put something out there and I let it be and might not hear anything in that moment. I don't care. Because what's going to happen is when I'm not looking, when I sleep and start to wake up in the morning, out of the blue, uh, an entire new book comes to me or an entire new idea or a problem solving. It, it all just flows when I'm not looking. It's, and I love that. It could be, it could be when I'm sitting on this show and you ask me a certain question, all of a sudden, one question, one answer, that, that, that answer will start downloading ideas to me and I'll think, wow, it's coming in. I'll make kind of a mental note of it and I'll have a whole 45 minute talk on it tomorrow, perhaps, mm -hmm. because yeah. it's constantly plugged in to not the internet, but the inner net. Uh, and, and communion with God and, and spirit. So it flows. But I will say that 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I was actually getting, you know, that, that time off, so to speak. Pretty soon I was inviting friends. I said, hey, listen, I'm home. I'm, uh, if any of you want to come out, you know, and visit during the holidays, people that didn't have family, I would let, you know, have half a dozen or whatever people from around the world or friends or students, they, they would come out and, and get together. And we would work on that, that emptying and preparing for a new life. So we actually made it part of our life. We, we, every January, we would prepare a new, like a treasure map, a prayer wheel of our new life, our, our new um, next, you know, the new year. <clears throat> so I was doing that every year. Pretty soon, several years ago, uh, seven, eight, nine years, whatever, I started doing it as an annual class in January wherever I could do it. And eventually at Unity of Sedona seven years ago. And people are like swarming. We would have the room filled with people wanting to talk about, learn about creating a new life. And, and, uh, and it'd be like, great. Then the online stuff, I started opening up to that a bit more. At first I, I waited until it felt right. But I started doing online courses more a few a couple of years ago. And when I did, that really launched it because I could, instead of fitting it into a three hour talk in a Sunday, I could make it um, a four-week course. Mm -hmm. and, and my four-week course, by the way, there's one week that's free, so it's actually a five-week course. And there's also an extra week at the end where I ask, if the students want me to, I'll do a review day. So it's almost six weeks, mm -hmm. um, even though we only charge it as a four-week course. It's really almost six, it's kind of six weeks. But, um, but my point was that that started as nothing but me doing a prayer will 10 years ago, 20 years ago, on my own every January. Then having a few friends talking about it, talking, clearing, processing, what can we get rid of that no longer we want in our lives? And that literally meant junk out of drawers and it meant stuff out of our hearts. 
Mm -hmm. and then creating a new life and it always worked it always worked this is a concept of mastery and i'm all about teaching mastery so this is like i mean spiritual mastery so it's like wow so it worked and now it's a course so my point is folks need to look at their lives and they'll realize at some point even little things i did like a, a, a getting together became a course yeah. little things you do um here and there it could be one of your episodes of this show launches into an entirely new thing or people watching could say this is weird because i've been feeling lately like i'm supposed to let something go because something new is coming i would listen to that i'm not going to tell them they should must listen to that i'm going to say if it were me i would start going uh oh pay attention uh, open up and listen yeah i mean and just this morning i was meditating and what spirit said to me was you know this is an interesting time start paying attention to synchronicities and make notes right. you know and i'm like okay so it i love it that you're reinforcing just the message i got in meditation today That's by right. talking about this so how can people like me um participate in your class uh, they can go on on my website or they can go on um my Facebook pages or my public page, there'll be a little announcements and all that, but mm -hmm. it's quite simple. They can even just email, but there, there's things, you know, prepared on my Facebook page. My public page is Michael Merdad, I think. Um, but um, they can go on that and then there'll be the usual little ads or PR and they click on that and, you know, they can sign up. And they also, um, the first um, Wednesday of January, they should mark their calendars. It's probably five o'clock Pacific time where we will have a free intro so you'll be getting you know kind of an overview of what it means to co-create a new life and please you know remember i'm not a salesperson. i'm not like a join my class now and you know and i'll i'll give you free shoelaces for the rest of your life you know i'm not a salesperson that i believe i believe these things make a difference you know i don't i don't just try to sell someone on a class I, I've lived this. I've done it myself for all these years. It works or I wouldn't do it. You know, like Buddha said, don't believe anything without testing it. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, let it go. You know, there's well, no. You teach people how to fish, Michael. <laughs> so they won't get hungry again, you know, and that yes. I know. So I've, uh, I've made a note and I'm going to put this on my calendar so that I can join you the first Wednesday of January at eight o'clock Eastern time. To right on. Thank you. In this. So, wow. Well, Thank you so much for stepping in this morning. I know it's early out there, um, but uh, thank you for joining us and sharing just a little bit, enough to pique our interest about co-creating and, um, and really making a life that matters. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And take a great care of yourself. Um, I think you're... Uh, you just, you know, you're one of the teachers I've met along the road, you know, on the road and, that, and so forth. One of the teachers and speakers at conferences where we've met, um, you know, um, out of all the people I've met, um, teachers and speakers, I cannot say that all authors, spiritual teachers and so forth, and I met probably all of them that people know of. Mm -hmm. I cannot say that, that I believed um, even 80% had a real live it kind of wonderful heart and integrity they could be good teachers they could be good authors but just not holistically um intact and i, I and i think you're you are and I, I really like your energy and i love what you do and and i know you care about the folks you you work with on your show so you know i, I believe that and and there's a couple others out there i think dan millman is fantastic mm -hmm. uh, as a soul i think he's a good guy alan cohen is really a good guy we can all agree and disagree on some points in life each person on the planet but I'm always impressed when people actually kind of embody and live um, these principles. I just dig that. I just love that about people. There's a saying I use, I love love, you know, and I love authenticity and everything that is love. I, I love love. God loves love. Love loves love, you know. It's the real loves the real. And, um, but thank you for being that way. And thank you for being one of those folks that I could say, you know, I, I met this one teacher and, you know, she's got great integrity and, and, re and remember this as I'm closing. Heaven, imagine this, heaven is not what people think it is. Heaven is more defined as follows than in any other thing. Heaven is made up of all the gratitude that other people have felt for you being in their life. Ooh. If you haven't made anyone feel grateful for having known you, 
there is no heaven waiting for you, so you better get to work. But no problem if you didn't, you just come back and do it again. Heaven is made up of the gratitude people feel for having known you. That's what gives you the wings to fly into higher realms. And, and I would say, you, Gene, thank you. you, you you're you one of those people that I and other people feel grateful for. So many blessings to you and happy holidays to you. And same to you. And listeners and viewers, please join me next week. My guest is going to be coming to us from Copenhagen, Denmark, where she lives. Her name is Barbara Berger, and she's got a new book coming out. So join me next week, and I will introduce you again to Barbara if you've not met her before. And until then, remember, people who take responsibility for their lives create the reality they desire. Ciao.